folks, Joseph Sabora here, back and fully recovered after reviewing Speed 2 Cruise Control, the sequel to the brilliant summer action blockbuster hit with Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock along with Dennis Hopper. Yeah, but the sequel features her again along with Jason Patrick and William Dafoe, which this time you know, Annie had a new boyfriend who also works for the LAPD, but he was a beach officer. And for an apology, decided to take on a Caribbean vacation on a cruise, which that's where we meet a generic villain who over hammies named John Geiger, who just takes a bath with his precious leeches and hijacks the crews, you know, doing everything his way, and also setting up all the bombs, too, before he can escape with the money, and then later, you know, serve Annie as his hostage, and damsel in distress, which <laughs> Alice comes to the rescue, even with the help of uh, Maurice. Well, now that I took a nice cold shower to wipe up that stench and get ready for the big game, yes, you know what I'm talking about. In honor of the new Space Jam, A New Legacy, yep, which is the sequel that's premiering today in theaters and on HBO Max exclusively for 31 days, so... Hopefully you'll get a chance to see it for all HBO Max subscribers. But if you want to see it on the big screen, which is a better suggestion, go right ahead. <laughs> so that way you can support feeders from long and thriving. So that way cinema will, will have a long and stay after this so-called pandemic. But now, I'm going to be reviewing the original live-action animated sports comedy. Space Jam. Get ready for the Space Jam. <laughs> yeah, like the song. Yeah, where Michael Jordan, the basketball legend from the Chicago Bulls, who teams up with the Looney Tune game, who are so iconic, very wacky and funny, who are about to be enslaved by a bunch of aliens, who wanted to use them for their theme attraction that's headed by the villain, Swackhammer. Yeah. And this is a very gorgeous uh, steel book that I picked this up back in 2016 when it was celebrating its 20th anniversary, which now is celebrating its 25th anniversary with its 4K Ultra HD release. I don't have that release yet, but maybe I might take a chance out of it. Uh, but this was an excellent set to own anyway, because it has both the Blu-ray and the DVD plus the digital code, but anyway, it looks very gorgeous, I mean, you can see, you know, right there, Michael Jordan, with this great smile, and you know, wearing the Toon Squad uh, jersey, and you can see the, well, you can see Bugs Bunny holding in the, the Michael's uh, secret formula, which is basically just water, <laughs> and yeah, you can see, like, Tweety, yeah, one of the aliens who just grew taller. Yeah, you can see Elmer Fudd, Lola Bunny, and yeah, you can see the whole team right here. Like you have Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, uh, Sylvester, Tweety, and yeah, Granny. I mean, all teaming up. <laughs> and I already used the code. But this is what it was um, when they still had ultraviolet, but with digital HD. And you have a sticker that says uh, Space Jam 20th Anniversary. And this is what the steelbook looks like. I'm not taking the disc out, but basically it's <laughs> just showing uh, Michael Jordan just holding the bottle of Michael's secret stuff that <laughs> Bugs Bunny just created. Yeah, it's, it's kind of feel a little disgusted here. Yeah, so it has both the Blu-ray and DVD included. 
Yeah, the Blu-ray is actually from 2011, while the DVD dates back to 1997 when it was released. And there's also the spine. <laughs> so, I got this at uh, Best Buy for a lot cheaper. Uh, it was during the Black Friday sale, but it was really nice to have it. And I really do love this steelbook. You know, it does serve the purpose. Anyway. So, the first time I saw Space Jam, I went to see it uh, back in November of 1996. Uh, I saw it with my family. Uh, we were just staying at my dad's uh, place, which was a hotel, no longer there anymore, uh, called The Voyager. It was in Van Nuys, California, um, which I think they're going to become a, a complex now. Yeah. Well, most of the time we stay over, we just watch like HBO or you know, play video games or just hang around and have some dinner or play games or stuff and then sometimes we go to a swimming pool or other times we'll go out and you know, have fun. I mean that sort of thing. So I went to see this and this was an inspiration to uh, Joe Pica's um, Super Bowl commercials that he directed where he brought in Michael Jordan along with the Looney Tune game, you know, teeping up and they spawned like several series of it and then later we had the MCI commercials too to join in before this movie came to be. Yeah, starting with Hair Jordan, you know, where Bugs Bunny was just about to play uh, basketball with all these uh, <laughs> basketball stars, you know, just trying to, <laughs> you know, show them the ropes. So, of course, Michael Jordan came to the rescue too to stop these goons. And that's what led to the series. And also this kind of plays almost like a biopic in a way, but it's more fictionalized because at the time, since Michael Jordan was the biggest uh, basketball legend for the NBA, uh, for Chicago Bulls, was that he was going for an initial retirement. Yeah, this is the start of him always retiring all the time. Uh, from the NBA so that way he can concentrate on his baseball game as a promise to his father because uh, that's what he, he wanted to do when he grows up you know like he wants to play in the NBA and he wants to go to college I mean before the NBA he wants to go to college and study hard he wants to be able to earn his scholarship be able to play a lot of games so he could be great at it and excellent and also he wants to play baseball too just as a support he also has a family to join to take care of and it's obviously that yes they love Looney Tunes <laughs> so what do you know <laughs> yeah and I guess it almost seems like it's like Who Framed Roger Rabbit in a way too I mean not since that movie where we actually get Looney Tune characters which they had to only make cameo appearances in that film where we had to go for another live action animated uh, feature and you know, put together but they also used digital ink and paint for the animation and some CGI effects too and you know they actually did use green screen effects to to have uh, Michael Jordan uh, come around you know playing the game with the Looney Tune game and also you know <laughs> battling the aliens and all and they act like they really were in the basketball or sports arena <laughs> and the fact that uh, these aliens uh, eventually steal all the powers from, from the NBA uh, all-star players like Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewing you also get a lot of cameos in this movie too um, including Bill Murray, since uh, this project was from the producer Ivan Reitman, you know, who gave us Ghostbusters and all, uh, along with the other producers. I mean, that makes sense because, you know, Bill Murray is, of course, the star of, of Ghostbusters, and uh, he played Peter Bankman. 
Uh, there's also a bit of uh, <laughs> his character in Caddyshack in there. And also you got um, other um, basketball stars like Roddy D. Bach and you even got um, uh, Larry Bird and other stars that you're familiar with. Plus you also got uh, the supporting cast of actors like Wayne Knight, you have Newman from Seinfeld, he was also in Jurassic Park, <laughs> among many others he's done. Marisa Rando, who was in the movie uh, Beverly Hills Cop 3, among others. Plus you got Billy West uh, to do the voice of Bugs Bunny with Dee Bradley Baker as uh, Daffy Duck. Yeah, hard to believe that Billy West, the same man who did the voice of Ren and Stimpy, and I'm wearing this shirt, <laughs> he also did the voice of Doug Funny, and then he later went on to do the voice of Fry in the TV show uh, Futurama. I mean, who would have thought that he could nail this performance to sound like a dead ringer to Mel Blank for Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah, so he, he would have did a great job. And plus you got Danny DeVito because also he had been in a film with Ivor Reitman with um, Twins and Junior come to mind. So it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> It was also the first feature film to be produced by Warner Brothers uh, Feature Animation. You had the same people that went on to do Quest for Camelot and The Iron Giant, which led to that fall. And it was a box office success, um, which actually grossed over $250 million worldwide. Yes, this was a huge hit. It was the highest grossing basketball film of all time. And was the 10th highest grossing film of 1996. Wow. Um, joining them with all the other films that were very successful. Uh, yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> it got mixed reviews from critics, which doesn't deserve. But thank goodness Cisco and Niebuhr finally went in hand to actually gave it a, a nice, excellent praise. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it myself that I didn't know they were going to praise this, but thank goodness they have. Yeah, this is a much better film than Speed 2 Cruise Control that they praised. Also, Letter Mullen praised the film too, which... That's really surprising. So at least now I know that, you know, they like the movie more than that other basketball film that came out that same year called Kazam. Yeah, the one with Shaquille O'Neal as the genie. If you ask me, I would rather watch this than Kazam. <laughs> yeah, and then what's ma what makes it even worse, though, is all these internet um, articles that's written by a bunch of, you know, shallow, stupid, idiotic uh, writers who don't know jack shit about movies or television or, or any other pop culture stuff. I mean, all they care is that they just want to, you know, eliminate them and destroy it using all this woke generation garbage that we have today. And that alone needs to stop. Which I know that's been going on lately too uh, with Lola Bunny. You know, the, the main attraction of this movie. You know, who was considered to be the hottest uh, basketball player ever. Yeah, <laughs> for a female. But she does have all the skills. I mean, she's beautiful. Very had a lot of spunk, and she could definitely uh, kick some ass. <laughs> okay, I know I can't believe I'm saying this. Since this is a kids movie. <laughs> okay, no, but it, but it's for adults too. I mean, it's it's for for both kids and adults because we all grew up with Looney Tunes. I mean, I grew up with Looney Tunes. So all my life, you know, ever since I started watching them on TV. And I watched them on Fox 11, I watched this on ABC, CBS, they played them all the time, with all the specials. You, even the, the VHS tapes we got from Pick and Save, which is now Big Lots, we started watching all these Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, you know, cartoons. 
And then I started watching all these other cartoons uh, on networks like TBS, TNT, uh, Nickelodeon, and um, later Cartoon Network. Yeah, they, they play this all the time, and, and I never get tired of it. You can even watch it on Boomerang, too. <laughs> and you can even watch it on their apps, and HBO Max does have them, too. So you, you just never go wrong with Looney Tunes. Or Merry Melodies, as you have to refer to. <laughs> okay. But, uh, let's begin. <laughs> it stars Michael Jordan uh, with Brandon Hammond, you know, playing a younger version of Michael Jordan. Uh, Wayne Knight, Theresa Rando, Bill Murray, Larry Bird, Manor Washington, Eric Golden, Penny Bray Bridges. Yeah along with the NBA players um, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, and some other players too that they were actually new to the game too like Sean Bradley, Larry Johnson, and uh, Mugley uh, Oguez. Uh, they got Fawn Perry uh, and Lockhart and there was even more NBA players like Vlade Divox, uh, Danny Angs, uh, Steve Kerr Alonzo Morning, Horace Grant, A.C. Green, Charles Oakley, Brian Shaw, Jeff Malone, Bill Winnington, Anthony Miller, Teron Wright. I mean, there's like a lot. Uh, even Jim Rome you know, from ESPN. Uh, they even got um, Patricia Heaton and Dan Kesselnetta. Yeah, he was the guy who did the voice of Homer Simpson, as well as the Genie in the Aladdin series. You know, just taken over for Robin Williams. Patricia Heaton, of course, was... I, I know she was in the movie Beethoven, but she was also in the, um, Everybody Loves Raymond, in the middle. Yeah. And we feature the voice cast of Billy West, uh, Dee Bradley Baker, yeah, Danny DeVito, great actor from Taxi, uh, along with um, movies like uh, Twins, um, Romancing the Stone with the sequel The Drill of the Nile, The War of the Roses that he directed, uh, along with uh, Fro Mama from the Train, uh, Batman Returns when he played the Penguin, Matilda, yeah, where <laughs> he was the narrator, but he was also the, the ruthless fodder at first. Uh, Bob Bergen, who, of course, had did the voice of Orson the Pig in the, the TV show Garfield and Friends, but, yep, he does do all the voice acting for all the other characters. Uh, Bill Farmer, um, who's uh, always been known for doing the voice of Goofy. So, we have a helping hand. A great Bertson, uh, June Foray, the legendary uh, voice actress who's no longer with us. But, of course, he's been known for doing numerous voice acting, even in the Looney Tunes days and all the others. Like, And he does do the voice of Granny, of course, of Rocky, as well as Natasha in the, the Rocky and Bullwinkle. And does, uh, does do the voice of Jokey Smurf and the Smurfs and Cindy Lou Who and, and the... Um, how the Grinch Stole Christmas, among many others. She will be missed. Maurice Lamarchi, yep, went on to do uh, a lot of voice acting, such as uh, doing the voice of Egon Spangler in the real Ghostbusters, along with the stream Ghostbusters. Does the voice of Brain in Pinky and the Brain, as well as Animaniacs, which is inspired by. Yeah, because Pinky and the Brain is the spin-off and part of the segment. <laughs> All right. Kath Susi, who of course has been known for doing the voice of Phil and Lil in Rugrats, Sneezer and Tiny to the Ventures, and uh, also Fifi LaFoon. But she even did the voice of Link uh, in Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Among others. Yeah. 
Jocelyn Blue, Charity James, June Melby, Catherine Reitman, who has to be related to uh, Ivan, um, Duran uh, Harewood, Joe Cameron, T.K. Carter, yes, from uh, the, the TV show uh, Funky Booster, along with uh, Saved by the Bell, and Frank Welker, a you know, longtime voice actor. Yeah, the voice god himself, you know, who does the voice of the villain, the, of Gavitron and, and uh, Transformers, but he also did the voice of you know, Curious George, and does like numerous stuff. Anyway, <laughs> boy, it's getting really long. Uh, of course, it's based on the Looney Tunes, uh, and also based on Michael Jordan's uh, stories and all. Yeah, it's written by Leo uh, Benavinati, Steve Rudnick, Timothy Harris, and Hachel uh, Weingrode, with producers uh, Ivor Reitman, Joe Metluck, and Daniel Goldberg, and it's directed by Joe Pika, who was a longtime filmmaker, music video director, as well as uh, commercial director. You know, he's done like a lot of stuff in his entire career since the 50s and um, of course he had a great relationship with both Michael Jordan and Michael Jackson uh, in fact this was the second uh, feature film that he ever directed and sadly the only two films he ever directed was this and his very first film uh, Let a Ride with uh, Richard Dreyfuss a very underrated gem but a great comedy, too. Yeah. The movie begins set at North Carolina, starting in 1973, where we meet a very young Michael Jordan, who's just playing basketball at night at his own home. Uh, tells his father, James R. Jordan Sr., that when he grows up, he wants to go to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill to play in a championship team to the National Basketball Association, which is, of course, the NBA. <laughs> yeah, well, the song, I Believe I Can Fly, by R. Kelly plays, yeah, you know that song, and then that's where it led to um, Quad City DJs of the Space Jam theme, which shows a compilation of highlights from Jordan's basketball career, including highlights from high school, college, the 1984-1992 Olympics, which is the Dream Team, and the Chicago Bulls, which follows an expert of the 1993 press conference, which led to the announcement that Jordan was starting to make a, an early retirement in his basketball career so he can concentrate on baseball, which wasn't exactly you know, as, as um, less skilled than his basketball, but this was a promise that he had to take from his father. Meanwhile, in outer space, um, an intergalactic, an intergalactic amusement park called Morn Mountain, you know, sort of a take on Six Flags Magic Mountain, faces a decline by its owner, Mr. Swackhammer, who's the villain, voiced by Danny DeVito, who sends his diminutive minions, known as the Nerdlux, to Earth so they can abduct all the entire Looney Tune gang which features Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, and Speedy Gonzales, uh, Sylvester, Tweety, Grandy, Tasmanian Devil, all, and all the rest of the game, and yes, even Elmer Fudd, Yosemite Sam, and of course, the, the attractive, tough, and sexy Lola Bunny. <laughs> and don't call her Dow, folks, because she's going to really knock you out. Yeah. What a babe. Okay, okay. But enough of that. Um, they wanted to develop them for their new attraction so they can save the theme park. But upon their arrival, they take advantage of the Dirt Lux small statue and challenged them to a game of basketball. So while they were watching a documentary on basketball, 
The Nurlocks learned that the sports best players are being employed by the NBA, and this is where they decided to go in disguise at the Madison Square Garden in New York, yeah, where he spotted the two basketball fans, you know, played by Patricia Heaton and Dan Casanetta, where at this rate, they're about to steal the powers of those five NBA players, which includes Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewing. And all the powers magically appeared when they stole the basketball directly. So now, once they actually control that, they eventually become very big, very giants, lean, mean, you know, very big basketball players that now they're going to defeat against uh, the Looney Tune game. So now they're taking over, even for this big challenge, they enlist the help of who else but Michael Jordan. <laughs> Because already they're going into uh, very big, uh, conflicted shambles through the entire uh, nation. Because now they have to shut down all the uh, basketball, all the sports arenas around the world because of a uh, what they seem to be sort of like a, an immune virus that's spreading around that it might affect all the players too, including the Lakers. <laughs> And this was at the time when Shaquille O'Neal would later join. Well, hey. <laughs> because he, at the time, you know, he was the Orlando Magics. Okay. So, while golfing, that's where you see Bill Murray together with Larry Bird. Um, well, Michael Jordan wasn't doing so well with his baseball. I mean, he just lost, even with all these couple swings and stuff. Uh, even with his family joining on the side, I mean, they even got a dog named uh, Charlie, <laughs> the bulldog, so it's cute, always like to jump around. Um, his son eventually lost the baseball game, too, so. but they were watching the Looney Tunes, and they already have a message that's being spread by Porky Pig while they were watching the Wally e. Coyote uh, chasing the Roadrunner, <laughs> doing all these you know, tricks. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, he also joins in with his personal assistant, Stan uh, Podolak, who's played by Wayne Knight. Um, because already, you know, probably using them as a plan to, like, go around, you know, be able to play some more uh, baseball games and probably, you know, selling some more merchandising like McDonald's, Nike, uh, Cologne and all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jordan is suddenly lassoed down into the hole, directly into the Looney Tunes world. Yeah, that's where you see the Warner Brothers uh, shield logo. And go directly, and then bon Bugs Bunny explains to Jordan about the situation that's going around where there's hope to place him as one of the best basketball players in the world to actually defeat the aliens which now they refer to them as the Monstars, you know. So this is one basketball team that they have to defeat after another. So they challenged for this game while they come up with their own new skills and other stuff that they have to practice, you know, for this old gymnasium that's been <laughs> been torn down, but they had to use a lot of spit shine. Of course, Lola Bunny appears, and this is where they start practicing hoping that they'll be able to be good at it the same way that the Monstars are. I mean, yeah, there's even a scene where <laughs> the Monstars came by and, and they even, even though they found out that Jordan had already retired, so he's sticking to baseball, apparently, you know, they've been calling out some names such as Boldy, and they even, uh, <laughs> they actually crumb Michael Jordan up into a, a basketball, and I was like, wow. <laughs> So now, um, since the monsters keep pecking on them and all, they're going to try to find a way to get even with them by actually trying to bring in the Jordan's uh, uniforms and shoes 
So they had to sneak across inside his house. Uh, with Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck together, they, they just... Daffy Duck just went straight into, you know, Charles the dog and got attacked. But Bugs Bunny just went in there trying to get the, the shoes and the shorts and the uniform as well. So they need all the gear that they can set up while the kids were awake and they're trying to tell them a secret that they don't want to know about. <laughs> so. so yeah, now um, after all the practice that they've been doing, they're now getting ready for the game. So that's why they came up with the Toon Squad. That's their basketball team. And yes, the joining by Stan, because Stan eventually follows them while trying to look for Michael Jordan, having to dug up all the dug all the, the entire golf hole you know, with a shovel. So now um, <laughs> they're getting ready for the big game uh, with Swats, but um, with um, with Mr. Swackhammer joining in. And bringing in the Monstars, and then the two, with Michael Jordan bringing in the, the two squad, and that's where they're getting ready for this whole huge game. Uh, now, I, for the beginning though, they almost um, are about to defeat the Looney Tunes, you know, the Toon Squad. But you know, they had to make a timeout, you know, for halftime to to see if Michael Jordan can actually try to reason with um, the entire game to see if they can try to find a way to stop him. Of course, with Bugs Bunny in, on hand just trying to come up with a secret formula, which is really just water, uh, they you know they were drinking it up because they realized that they have their secret uh, powers of their own, which Stan actually found out that, yes, they did stole it. And then he got caught by them. And they, they beat them up and and just to reform them, what they did. So now they're about to you know, <laughs> have a taste of their own medicine by actually creating all these wacky humor stunts that they do. Even a lot of pop culture references like Pulp Fiction, for instance. Yeah, where you got <laughs> Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam dressed up as Vincent and, <laughs> and Jules. I mean, wow, that, that is so clever. And then there's other moments too where Tweety was like, <laughs> was uh, doing all, all these uh, martial arts, you know, to defeat those <laughs> stars. Uh, Bugs Bunny was like doing the special delivery stuff, or, or even the scene where Daffy Duck actually <laughs> paints uh, one of the monsters, and <laughs> and then the bull suddenly comes and just <laughs> just attacks him and all. <laughs> And then, yeah, they even show his butt, too, and <laughs> and all the craziness. And, yes, even Lola Bunny just starts to <laughs> eventually try to flirt with them. And so that way, you know, she'll be able to make the shot and all. So apparently they're, they're getting better, but, but then they started getting defeated once again. But then Bill Murray shows up. <laughs> to actually save the, the game, but not as much though, because unfortunately they're playing defense, since he doesn't really play defense. I know, I, I wish there were more of that. They, they, that would have been awesome. Because he was also open too. And then, this is where, because, you know, since he's in the animated world, Michael Jordan finally makes the last shot which it was a big shot, you know. He does that, the famous uh, jump pose, which he was uh, ready to be able to slam, dunk directly into the hoop. But then you notice that his arms start to stretch, like it's Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> so he made it, and they won the game. <laughs> they really won the game, and and so now because this was part of a bet that they had to choose that if he wins they'd be able to have the the game but if but if he lost then well they're going to start working with Michael Jordan and this is where it's going to lead to but unfortunately that plan 
after they they won the game, I mean, this is what led to something where now the Bond Stars eventually uh, gets um, gets more than what they bargained for, since they they even got tired of having to work at this theme park, and they knew that Swackhammer was was definitely using them. So now they got even with him, and they finally, you know, kick him out and send him all the way straight into the moon. <laughs> yeah, setting up with a rocket. So now um, they learned their lesson, and now they wanted to to be able to go back to the way they were, since the powers had drained out, and now they can. They gave them a favor from Michael Jordan, and the Looney Tune game was to actually bring the powers back to the NBA players which I know during the course of the film you know they were going for a lot of problems you know since they don't have the powers like Charles Barkley wanted to play with the girls basketball team and apparently you know they tell him he's a he's a he's a ripoff the other ones however are, are not exactly who they are <laughs> And they, they, you know, they had to go through all, all the uh, the psychiatrists. They had to go to the hospitals. You know, they they had to take they had to take a fortune teller and anybody. So hoping they'll find a way to to go back to the way they were as a promise. But, but hey, when Michael Jordan finally came back to Earth in a withstand, they actually brought in the basketball. And with all the powers, so they have to have all five of the teams touch it, so now they get their powers again, and they'll get to play. And apparently they wanted Michael Jordan to join in to play the game. <laughs> and then later on, Jordan already returns um, to the Chicago Bulls, so now he can finally play the basketball game that, that idolized everyone and fans alike. And while, of course, Bill Murray himself is already feeling kind of disappointed because, you know, he made the biggest mistake of his life by actually dropping out. Well, I mean, I, I know, because, I mean, Murray may not be an athlete, but he's a very funny comedian to choose. But, hey, he wants to do something different, so why not? <laughs> so, while he was watching the, this awesome uh, Chicago Bulls game. Yeah, so the movie ends this way, and while the Looney Tune gang is already back to to normal, doing all their rocky stunts and, and crazy, crazy stuff that they always do, <laughs> like all the other shorts that they've done. <sighs> okay. Well, in my opinion, as opposed to other people, I love it. I always have and always will, and I'll never change my mind even as a Looney Tunes fan. Um, this was a great idea to actually have a combination with Michael Jordan teaming up with the Looney Tunes game to, to battle, you know, aliens who now came up with their own basketball team and hoping, you know, to save Earth and everyone else and everything and do what they can. Uh, the animation is just stunningly beautiful. I mean, back in the 90s though. I mean this was one of the earlier films to be shot in the virtual studio which of course you know they used the green screen effects uh, for Michael Jordan and the rest of the actors. I mean they even even with all the effects that they actually had done it was actually very well done. I mean well advanced back then. I mean some people may think oh it looks you know dated or everything but in some case or another I thought it looked pretty primitive for for that period. I mean, it probably would still hold up today. I mean, there's even that scene in the movie where Stan got flat as a pancake when the Monstars actually jumped at him when he was about to uh, go right open and was ready to pass it or, or about to make a, the shot, which he did, is where he was flat like a pancake and then, you know, they brought in like the... <laughs> They brought in the air so they could be able to blow him up, and yeah, that's where he starts farting. Well, he's a fat guy, so what do you know? 
and he goes back to normal until he was being sent uh, at, for medical attention so he could be fully recovered, which he did. <laughs> um, and yeah, they were really impressive to use digital ink and paint for the Looney Tune characters. I mean, with traditional animation that they had to do, you know, to put it together for, for 2D. Um, but it does have a bit of uh, a 3D image uh, towards it. So, it, it looks um, very pristine, uh, very uh, perfectly cut right there. I mean, when you see all the characters that you love joining in, uh, and you get a lot of impressive voice acting to join in. I mean, this is perfect. And it really is. I mean, okay, so maybe the story could have some more improvement here, but that doesn't make a difference. It's not meant to be a masterpiece or like Shakespeare or anything like that. I mean, this is the whole point. It's just a fun live-action animated sports comedy that you really expected with all the the familiar jokes, all the craziness, the wackiness of them all, and all the humor that went into it, even the ones that are so familiar with from other movies or shows or any other pop culture references, it works. And I like that idea. I mean, they must have took a lot of work to do all this stuff together. Um, so not meant to take itself too seriously. And the soundtrack was definitely uh, kick-ass. Uh, let's put it this way. There's a lot of great songs like, for example, uh, Seal's uh, cover version of Steve Miller's band's Fly Like an Eagle. You know that song. Do, 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 do. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. I want to fly like an eagle to the sea, fly like an eagle, let the spirits carry me, I want to fly, fly, fly into the future. Yeah, <laughs> I got carried away, but I love that song. <clears throat> and I also love the song, the, I believe I could fly. I believe I could touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. Yeah, by R&B singer R. Kelly, who... Yeah, I know, I know. <clears throat> but I don't want to talk about that. <clears throat> uh, but there's also other songs, too, like Hit em Up High by the Monstars Anthem, which has Be Wheel. Buster Wives, Coolio, <coughs> LL Cool J, Method Man. <laughs> There's also Basketball Drones by Barry White and Chris Rock. Yes, Chris Rock, the comedian. <coughs> <laughs> There's also the song um, I Turn to You by All For One. Uh, For You I Will by Monica. Yeah, that song, which I know I heard that on All That. <coughs> And, of course, the title song by Quad City DJs. Get ready for the Space Jam! <clears throat> but the score was also done by James Newton Howard, so they actually created all the other scenes, uh, except for the Melody Melodies theme. But you get the idea. Yeah. So, oh yeah, and, and the features on the Blu-ray and DVD and should be on the 4K release as well. Uh, they actually had um, the, the jamming with uh, Bugs and Jordan, the featurette, uh, the 22 minute featurette, which shows uh, the behind the scenes look of the film, which looks really impressive at the time, and you can watch it. <clears throat> and yeah, they have uh, Ira Reitman, and you have. Uh, all the rest of the Looney Tunes characters, you know, doing interviews, you know, with Michael Jordan joining in. It's really cool. Uh, they also have the music videos uh, with, of course, Seal and, and uh, the Monstars. Even the theatrical trailer to join in, too. <clears throat> so, great release. 
Uh, the transfer on the Blu-ray, as opposed to the DVD, I mean, at the time, it was actually very pristine, very vivid, uh, totally brighter, too, as I saw it. Uh, it's actually closer to the theatrical exhibition when I went to see it in theaters, so it was, it's perfect. So the 4K uh, release, uh, well, I saw some screenshots. Um, it basically just, because, you know, Warner Brothers has a bit of an, a very... Uh, sort of um, a little bit lacking at times but also substantial uh, re releases where some some of them might be good some other ones could be either bad or, or mediocre I mean maybe because they use a lot of gamma in those releases but always they tend to look a little better than ever but whatever the case uh, there was a lot of merchandising for the film at the time, too. Yeah, it really expanded a lot. Um, they had a lot of video games, comics. Um, they had those um, Looney Tune dolls, you know, with the Toon Squad uniforms uh, that they sold at McDonald's. <clears throat> they had those Air Jordans. Uh, and they even had all these Bugs Bunny shirts, you know, even with ones with, with the Looney Tunes and... You know, while they were playing the game. Uh, I mean, they spread around. Plus, I know the Bond Stars make a cameo appearance in Pinky and the Brain. And I know they later had a lot of uh, spin-offs to join. I mean, God, they, they had everything. I mean, no wonder this movie was so popular. And yeah, it even earned some awards, too. Uh, who who would have thought? I mean, it actually won the 1997 Annie Awards. It, it won uh, for best individual achievement. Uh, won the two for the ASCAP Film and Television Music Awards. Uh, was nominated for the MTV Movie Awards for for the one song uh, by R. Kelly. Uh, won a Grammy for for R. Kelly's song and nominated for Satellite Awards and actually won for World Animation Celebration. I mean. Who would have thought? So, even for 25 years later, I'm hoping that this sequel, Space Jam A New Legacy, which now we have LeBron James uh, playing the role, taking over from Michael Jordan, and I know before that we had Looney Tunes Back in Action, which to me would have been the real sequel, um, which to me is a very underrated uh, movie. It didn't do well at the box office like it should have been. I know it sucks. But I still love it. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, it was nice to see the Looney Tune gain again. Uh, joining in with actors like Brendan Fraser, Jenna Elfman, and Steve Martin. <laughs> so. But um, <clears throat> still, I thought it was very impressive. Um, Joe Pika did a great job. Um, I love the series of all the the Nike commercials, and of course, because I love Michael Jordan and uh, all the Looney Tune game. Uh, also, you got to get credit to Michael Jordan because he did an awesome job. You know, pretty much playing himself. I mean, even though it wasn't easy for him to uh, do a lot of acting lessons here, but I guess he he definitely portrayed it exactly who. He, we got and even uh, shows a lot of uh, skills and and there's even the moments too when he was he pretty much acts like a coach you know trying to you know teach um, all the Looney Tunes how to do exactly as they did it so so now they have to show confidence and everything they could to beat these guys and <clears throat> so he also has a lot of character in him and it shows. I mean, I wish uh, Shaq did the same for Kazam, but whatever. <laughs> hey, you know, I got to see him in, <laughs> in other stuff. Yeah, same goes with Steel, because Steel was bad. Okay. <clears throat> and, yeah, I know that, um, I think Chuck Jones probably didn't care for it at first. Um, yeah, I know, because... They wanted to go for Chuck... At first, I think they were going to go for Chuck Jones' animation, but they went ahead with 
Bob Clampett style of animation so yeah that's probably another reason and I know they had a lot of they have some conflicts too but that's okay what matters the most was it's a fun movie and I enjoyed it and it still holds up even to, to this day so I, I really hope that the new movie will turn out just as good as this one if not for the worse I mean because the way things are going nowadays, I mean, come on. Okay. Anyway, that's Space Jam, and I give the film four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and as Porky Pig always says, Biddy, 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 that's all, folks.